to speak briefly to the singles and I know the married will benefit from what I am going to speak but tonight we shall be dealing with delay dealing with marital delay And if you are single, quickly take your seat and listen to what I'm about to say. But we want to appreciate God for the very impactful message preached by the woman of God. Anybody blessed at all? As we are going to be having a recurrence of these meetings, my plan an intention is that maybe one of those meetings will just leave her to go full blast one session then maybe another day I can take a full blast session so that um, we can have the full impact without rushing the things that must be taught I want to announce that peace is better than crisis it's far more profitable to be at peace in the presence of peace there is progress nobody's life, you can't move forward your, 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 yourself and your wife you are in tension and you enjoy it yourself and your husband you are under pressure and you enjoy it Anywhere there is war, there can be no development. You were in Liberia, you saw it. Go to the northeast. Peace is platform for progress. Peace is also platform for potentials release. Every time a man's peace is lost, his potentials can't be found. It's not possible. Intelligent students fail exam in school because their family is in crisis at home. I prayed for some children in our school here. is also necessary for perception I will hear what God will speak he will speak peace God speaks in the climate of peace Psalm 85 verse 8 no, you can't hear God you don't know what to do with your life if peace is lacking The man should do everything possible to ensure that his life is at peace. The woman should do everything possible to ensure that the home is at peace. I am married for 25 years. I don't have any pressure. That is wife originated pressure. So I'm running. That is, you come home every day and say, oh, please, let's continue from where we stopped yesterday. So as I was talking last night, you haven't answered me yet. Peace. That is why I can walk in the morning and say, I just came to love you. Thank you. I feel loved. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> that 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 is a therapy, a, a, a treatment. You know there are two types of treatment. There is um, 
there is what we call prophylactic treatment and the active therapy. Prophylaxis is prevention. Peace is coming for somebody's home. So don't enjoy quarrel that me and my wife we are quarreling or me and my husband we have not been talking. Don't enjoy it. It's not a normal state. It's an abnormal state. Let us go quickly as we deal with delay. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 17 to 18. Let not your heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. For surely there is an end and thy expectation shall not be cut short. I speak to a single girl here, a single man here. There is an end to your singleness and your expectation shall not be cut short. Everyone trusting for the fruit of the womb or trusting for your children to get married and get settled or trusting for your siblings. I prophesy there is an end and your expectation shall not be cut short. You believe that? Shout the loudest, amen. Take your seat. Our objective is to understand, understanding and dealing with the causes of delay. We want to understand and then we want to deal with the causes of delay. Delay in getting married. Delay in getting settled. There are three things I want us to note as we run on this subject. Number one, God is a God of times and seasons. He is also a God of plans and purposes. God is a God of times and seasons. He is a God of plans and purposes. The meaning is that God fulfills the right purpose at the right season. That is the meaning of that statement. He fulfills the right purpose at the right season. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. He said to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. So there is a time to get married. There is a time. Marriage is a purpose and there is a season for it. And God is a God of times and purpose. And of course in verse 11 of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 3 11, he said he made everything beautiful in his time. It's a beautiful thing when somebody marries at the right time. The situation is become, starts getting ugly when the person can't marry at the same time, or on, at the right time. Someone sent me a text message today, and maybe she may be here. He said, today is her 46th birthday, and she's still single, and she's not celebrating. No, don't do that. Celebrate. Celebrate that you have life. You see, so it, the person is concerned because I am 46 now. Maybe I should have married 20 years ago around the age of 26. You see, so he made everything beautiful in his season. That's the first thing. Number two, God is a God of early satisfaction. Early satisfaction. Early. He satisfies us early. Psalm 46 verse 4. Psalm 46 verse 4. He said there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacles of the most high. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And, do, and he will do that right early. Right early. Right early. God satisfies people early. Psalm 90 verse 14. He said, oh, satisfy us early with your mercy. Satisfy us early with your mercy. That we may rejoice and be glad all our days. He satisfies early. I experience early satisfaction.
I think it was two months to my 26th birthday and I was married. I think my wife was Twenty-three plus, maybe twenty-three and six months, and she was married. You see, and I believe that tonight that mystery shall be reproduced in people's lives. Anyone who has experienced a delay by the testimony of your pastors I just spoke about, that delay is over forever. Shout the loudest, amen. amen. Lift the right and say, Father, satisfy me early. Amen. Take your seat. But another person might be saying, I have passed the 20s, even 30s. If I marry now, is it early? Yes, it can be. Thought that leads me to the third point. God is a God of the restoration of years. He is the God of the restoration of years. In Joel chapter 2 verse 25, he said, so in case it looks like you have passed the time you can call early, he said, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent to you. I will restore to you your years. The meaning of that is you will get married, and you will marry as if it was the, as if you married at the right time. You will enjoy the marriage. It will be beautiful. It will be lovely. It will be exciting. You will still give birth to your children, and all the children you need to give birth to, you'll give birth to them and fulfill your destiny as you should have done if you married earlier. Somebody shout the loudest. Amen. <laughs> Yesterday, a man dedicated four children at once, quadruplets, born at once. They had only a slight delay of three years and when they would give birth to children, they gave birth to four at once. Four at once, four. Three girls, sorry, three boys, one girl. And I asked the man, I said, how many more to go? He said, "Not no more. That, they are okay at this level. That is one delivery chapter closed. I prophesy to somebody that restoration shall happen. Everything the devil took from you, your years, everything the devil took from you, I prophesy restoration is coming your way. Shout the loudest, amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. If God is a God of times and seasons and there are times for, for things, and he satisfies us early. What could be the reason for some delays? Why is it that at times the things that are expected don't happen? Especially we are talking about marriage now. The context of marriage. I'm going to look quickly at seven things. Number one, ancestral curses or spells. You can call them anti-marital curses or spells. In the book of Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18 all the way to verse 21. It showed me, then I lift, then lifted I up mine eyes and saw and behold four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah. Israel and Jerusalem. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then said I, what come this to do? And he said, saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah so that no man doth did lift up his head. But these have come to fray them or to scatter them. To cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah. Now we are seeing the whole land of Judah with a demonic territorial power that came to press their head down. 
In this case, nobody was permitted to lift up their head or to become anything useful. If you extrapolate this to the area of marriage, it might be a situation where nobody in a particular family was permitted to become anything maritally or to succeed. You remember Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14 where he said Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us as it is written. Curse is everyone that hangs on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. So we have generational, ancestral and family curses. In Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 29 to 30 you remember the story. He said in those days they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grape. And the children's teeth are set on edge. He said, but everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Is God speaking to somebody here at all? So these are, ancest these are ancestral or generational causes and spells. It works in, in, in different ways. In some families, working num number one, no marriage. No marriage at all. I've come across ladies who say that in, in, a, in their family, nobody has ever married. You can, you, can, you can decide to live with a man and have children, but never be married. You can give birth outside wedlock, but not to sit under a man. So the first manifestation of this ancestral or anti-marital curse, at times it comes also in the form of spirit husbands. Not necessarily because there is a, a curse in the family, but a spirit husband or a spirit spouse... There are those who see spirit husbands and spirit wives in their dreams and visions. There are those who don't see them, but they still exist. Am I communicating at all? All right? Because we see the effect of them. So, first, no marriage. Se second manifestation, late marriage. There are those in, in, in their families, nobody marries. Give birth to any ch child you want, but no marriage. A another place, late marriage. They will be 40 something, almost 50. Then they, they think of getting married. The third manifestation is troubled marriage. Troubled marriage is still an ancestral curse in generation affairs. And I'm not talking of when it happens to only one person. When you see one person, second person, third person, fourth person, all their marriage is troubled. Until people are afraid to marry from that family because there is trouble. Troubled marriage. First, no marriage. Second, late marriage. Third, troubled marriage. Fourth, failed marriage. It's not just trouble now, but they will get married, but it will not last. It will end in separation. It will end in divorce. It will end, I think it's better you do A, B, C, since we have um, number one, two, three for the main numbers. All right? And then you have, you have failed marriage. People can count aunties and uncles. I heard the mouth of um, it's one servant of God. In their family, they are 35, 35 children. I think the polygamous home. All 35, no marriage worked. All of them. He was the only, the last man standing, trying to make it work. Aunties, uncles, none worked. My question. But in case you are like that here, the yoke is going to be broken. I am not telling you so you can be afraid. I am telling you because you came here so that it can be scattered. Somebody say a loud amen. So there is no marriage, late marriage, troubled marriage, failed marriage. Then you have liability marriage. In this situation, you have a situation where the people can get married, but it's a liability marriage. A marriage that is full of poverty, scarcity, shortage. Situations where it is the woman that is taking care of the, of the home. I've seen situations where uh, uh, the, 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 the people are married, but maybe the husbands lose their job, jobs or something. And then you realize that it is the wives taking care of the husbands. It's a curse. It's not good. It's the man that takes care of the home, not the wife. Am I communicating at all? The woman is spending her money for children's school fees, spending her money for, 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 for food in the house, spending her money even for the cloth that the man will wear. It's a curse and it shall be broken here tonight. And if any man doesn't recognize that that is a problem, the problem is the man. If any man does not recognize 
that his wife taking care of him is a problem. The problem is the man. Failed marriage. So we have all these under anti-marital curses and anti-marital spells. Number two, cause of delay is character challenge. Character challenge. They need where there must be character renovation, character development in the man or the woman before God can trust them with any, any of his children. Listen to this. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 1, the Bible gave, gave me a parable. He said, now I say that a hair, the hair, as long as he is a child, that is, he is immature, that is, he, he is not matured in character, he differed nothing from a servant, even though he is the Lord of all, but he is kept under governors in verse 2. He's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. This man is potentially the owner of everything, but he is not matured. His character is not in order. So God says, keep him aside. Let him be trained and tutored until the time appointed. Then he can then be brought in charge. Am I communicating? In other words, his inheritance is ready for him, but he is not ready for the inheritance. There are people, marriage is ready for them but they are not ready for marriage. The problem is not that the man is lacking or that the woman is lacking. The marriage is possible, but they are not yet ready. Am I communicating at all? What is the meaning of that? The oil came upon David's head at the age of 17, but he could not ascend the throne until he was 30. It took 13 years to mature him for the unction. Am I communicating at all? There are people God is saying, if I allow you to marry with this anger, it is either husband may mistakenly kill you, God for somebody say God forbid, or sack you the next day. See, there is a problem. There is a problem. A man told me a story of how he was in a relationship with a lady. He said the manifestation of anger in that lady was so much. He said they were on the, inside the vehicle on the road one day. The anger was so much he was afraid that the vehicle was going to lose control. I think it was the lady driving. When, the lady, when they slowed down somewhere around the traffic junction, he opened the door quickly and stepped down. Closed the door. He ran for his life. That was the end. That was he. he. He ran without looking back. That was the end. The lady, not that he's a sinner in terms of waywardness, but that dimension was an untreated dimension. God is saying, let me keep you to wait. Some, the arrogance is too much. The pride is too much. Talk to me, I talk to you back is too much. Some, the bitterness, the envy is too much. Jealousy is too much. Some submission is zero. And vice versa. Some men have no capacity to take care of a wife. They will be hiding, they will have money and be hiding it somewhere. There is no money I have in this world that my wife is not aware. Say there, I don't have it. <laughs> Did you hear that house, sir? Stroke it down. I said, there, I don't have it. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? So somebody's prayer regarding the matter of delays, Father, is there any character problem in my life? Is there something you want to fix in my life? There are some people, unforgiveness is too much. When you do something today, they will remind you in 13 years' time. Those children running up there, take care of them. They will remind you, and God is saying, Don't worry, take your seat. Some children think this is a, a stadium. I see them. So 
the character problem must be handled. Lord, prepare me for the man, for the man or the woman, whatever is in me that is causing me to be delayed. Help me, Lord. That is number two. Number three is sinful action. Now the two of them are different. The character challenge may not be active sin as it were. It may not be an active kind of sin uh, in terms of uh, he, he, he stole, he, he did this or that. He must be just in, traits inside. But here is sinful action. Do you know that sin is, is a disruption for destiny and can be a major cause of delay? In Romans chapter 3 verse 23, the Bible said, all have sinned and come short of glory. What does that mean? Sin makes people to fall short of purpose. Sin makes people to fall short of purpose. Sin disconnects people from purpose. Romans 6 23 said the wages of sin is death. The meaning of that is when you sin something dies. Favor can die. I heard that for the first time from T.L. Osborne of blessed memory. Relationship can die. It can die. What am I talking about? Somebody is a liar. You lie to the man, you discover the lie, he can end the relationship on the spot. He gave you money, he trusted you, and then you cheated him, and he realized that that can end the relationship there. And the most common one is the defilement of the bed. The man and the woman sleeping with each other before getting married. There is something I call a Montana syndrome. ATS. It's not a medical word. It's a Bible word. Amon, am, Amnon Tama syndrome. ATS. What is the syndrome? Do you remember the story of Amnon and Tama? In 2 Samuel chapter 13 verse 1. By the name, all right, it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. That's Amnon Tamar syndrome. Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. He lost her after her until he fell sick, for she was a virgin. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But Ammon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimea, David's brother. Jonadab was a very subtle man. The, the, another time we use the word subtle was for the serpent. So Jonadab was a serpent. And he said unto him, why are you being the king's son, getting lean from day to day? Will you not tell me? And Ammon said to him, I love Tamar, my brother, Absalom's sister. Now let me spare you the detail. Long story made short. Um, Jonadab told him, you cannot love her and just be here like this. Pretend that you are sick. Invite her. Let, tell your father to send her. Long story made short. When she comes, do whatever you want. After he followed the wicked counsel of Jonadab, which led to his death later. We'll say that another day. I'm sure you're aware of that. There is a statement the Bible made. I will never forget. In verse 15 of 2 Samuel 15. After he had defiled her. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. So that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. How can the same person. I love this girl until I feel sick of love. Then suddenly, you hate this girl until you hate her more than how you loved her. The Amnon Tama syndrome has three features. Number one, passionate love. 
love. I love you. You love me. I, oh, I can't do without you. You are the only bed bug in my bed and the only cockroach inside my secondary school box. Right. Uh, without you, I cannot do with. I can't do without you. I swear. You know when people say I swear, it means I am lying. Oh, I intend to lie. I, I mean, I am not serious. I mean, I, I am planning to deceive. It has the Amnontama syndrome. First is passionate love. Second, uncontrolled sinful act. That is the second feature. That passionate love proceeds into uncontrolled sinful act. Oh, we love each other. We hold hands. We do this and that. And then the third feature is overwhelming and extreme hatred. I said overwhelming because the hatred became stronger than the love. That's what happens. And some people wonder. The man said he loved me. And I love him too. Suddenly he changed towards me. If the devil was not at work and there is nothing after you, the next question we want to ask is, did anything happen between the two of you? Most people that tell me like this, 99% will say, yes, something happened. I've talked to a lady who had had five relationships and all broke. I said, all these relationships that br broke, did you have anything with any of them? You say, all of them. All right? So it will break. That thing, she already said it, so I don't need to go into it, to the details. The lack of love, the lack of trust, the lack of respect, extramarital affair, and then of course, mutual perennial suspicion. See, so sinful act can be a cause of delay. When somebody uh, is, is, is deliberately, consciously living in that kind of action. I'll come to the consequence of why it can cause delay later on. So that was number two. Three. When we're in a relationship with my wife, we told each other, any day this bed is defiled, that is the day it ended. If we agree, we are, whatever happens that makes this bed defiled, we have agreed that that is the end of the, mari of the marital proposal. Very, very important. This is important. And so we have ancestral curses. We have character challenge. We have sinful action. Number four is lack of service. I want you to know that what I am telling you are spiritual principles. Because somebody may tell me or ask me, what about unbelievers that get, get, got married? I am not talking to unbelievers. I'm not talking to unbelievers. I'm talking to Christians. I'm talking to children of God. Uh, the, 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 I'm talking about people in the kingdom who are trusting God to give them kingdom results. Am I communicating? Lack of service. The place of service is the place of answers. As far as scripture is concerned, the place of service is the place of answers. The place of service is also the place of rewards. Zechariah, in Zechariah chapter 1, verse 8 to 13, Zechariah and his wife were married for years, no child. But while Zechariah was doing service in the house of the Lord, the answer came that him and his wife will have the fruit of the womb. The place of service is the place of answers and the place of service is the place of rewards. Zechariah's wife got pregnant because he was at the temple. In Exodus chapter 2 verse 15 to 21, you will see how Jethro's daughters in the course of doing their father's service, encountered Moses. Moses saved them from the shepherds that were fighting them. And their father asked, where is the man? Why didn't you call him home? Long story made short, they invited Moses home and, and, he, and he gave Moses his first daughter for wife. A 
as that girl was on his father's assignment, husband came. Anybody remember another example? Rebecca was carrying her father's flock and encountered Abraham's servant that was looking for wife for Isaac. While she was on that assignment, she connected. That was Genesis chapter 24. Can read anywhere from verse 20 all the way. That was where she encountered husband, the place of service. Is God speaking to somebody here at all? Joseph, serving people and serving his God in the kingdom of Egypt was able to get a wife in the name of Pharaoh's daughter. Do you remember the story of young lady, a man testified here. When we told you to go on evangelism, he was testifying about how he got his wife. One of our members here went on evangelism and in this case she was posted to Asaba and she was doing the evangelism in Asaba area following the instruction from the church here in another town and he was preaching to this man and the man was already a born again Christian <laughs> trusting God for a wife and he was preaching to the man and the Holy Ghost said that is your wife and he said thank you for talking to me I will follow you to church he was behaving as if he was a new convert and followed her to church. Long story made short, they got married. At the place of service, they were located. I, I don't know, I don't know the number of people who located each other in this church. At the place of service. Ushers are specialists in that kind of location. Maybe it's because they stand all the time and they are looking everywhere. But I know that ushers easily locate ushers. It counselors even locate counselors and, 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 and choir too. At the point of service, I met my wife. I was a president of the Medical Students Fellowship, Nigerian Christ, Conference of Christian Medical and Dental Students in, in our university. And she was is one of the secretaries in the internal ESCO. Well, I didn't think too much that she would be my wife because I'm um, like I said, I had trusted God for her to get a good husband to marry. <laughs> I trusted God for her with her to get a good husband to marry. And um, as far and if you if you if you ask God, He will tell you. It didn't cross my mind that she will be the one. And I didn't know I was the answer to the prayer. You know, Jesus told the disciples, he said, pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers into the field. And they became the laborers. They, they, they were praying for themselves. Hallelujah. At the place of, don't despise service. Neither should you do it because you want to find husband. Or find a wife. Otherwise, you will be shocked. I'm sure you remember the, the story I told you of, of a man who came to church. He was not a Christian at all. But he said, let me go to church and get a good church girl. And then a girl came to church too. Let me go to church and get a good man to marry. And they met each other. Both of them were not Christians at all. The first day they got home, the man opened the bottle of beer. I think the woman lighted a cigarette. <laughs> The man said, I thought you were a Christian. The woman said, me too, I thought. That was how breaking of bottle on each other's head started. Uh, if you come for a wrong purpose, you will not be disappointed. You will meet the wrong, you will meet the wrong purpose. If husband is the reason why you came to church, you will meet a husband, but maybe not from God. And if wife, but you are serving God with passion. You are serving God with authenticity. 
you are deciding to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things. The house, the car, the job, the wife, the husband, the children, and everything that others are looking for shall be added to you. You believe shall the loudest. Amen. Take your seat. While we're growing up as children, there were those who put husband and wife as their first priority. We put God as our first priority. We married far ahead of many of such people. Some marriages even didn't work. Do you understand what I'm talking about? God first. So, it is the lack of service. Number five is the lack of vision. Again, I'm talking to Christian people who are trusting God to follow God's principle and get the results. A lack of vision. Genesis chapter 13 verse 15. God said to Abraham, all the land which you see, to you will I give it and to your seed forever. What is the meaning? What God gives is determined by what man sees. All the land which thou seest to thee will I give it. What do you see of a wife or a husband? An empty heart will produce an empty life. If you don't know what you want, you won't recognize it if you see it. That's why many are confused. I have seen three men. I don't know which one is the, is the one among them. There will be no cause for that. I have seen, I, I, there are three ladies around me. I, I don't know which one is the right person. There will be no cause for that. If you have precisely, if you precisely connect with God to know what God wants you to do with your life and what you want out of life yourself. Am I communicating at all? What you cannot define, you can never discover. It was not hard for me to, at the end of the day, discover who I'm to marry. And by God's grace and by his mercies, as a young man, I went to just one person for the sake of marriage. And that's the person I'm married to for life. Not, not two, not three. Have I talked and said, can I marry you? No, because it was so clear what it was. It should be clear to you what is not clear to you is not there for you. If it's not clear, crystal clear in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit, what it is that you trust God for in a home. And there are, and there are two dimensions of this clarity of vision. The first dimension is knowing what God wants you to do with your life. If I don't know what I am to do with my life, how can I know who is to help me do it? There are young ladies, I mean, they are just waiting. They don't have no vision, no direction. They don't know what to do with their lives. Maybe just staying like a liability and waiting for somebody to come and carry a liability. No. And, and some men are worse. They don't know where they are going in life. No vision, no purpose. And they want somebody's daughter to follow them to nowhere. Did you hear what I just said? They want somebody's daughter to follow them to nowhere. When I talk to young ladies, I said, what kind of husband are you trusting for? 99% of girls said, I, I want a man who knows what he's doing with his life. I want a man who has a vision. I want a man who is clear, who is going somewhere. I want a passionate man. I want somebody who is vision driven, goal oriented. I want somebody who is focused and target. 99% of girls. So I don't, I'm not looking for a man who doesn't know, who does, doesn't know what he wants out of life. I'm not looking for somebody who is, uh, you see, there are some men who are looking for women to rescue them. They are waiting for a woman to rescue, to pay their bills. Useless man. We 
waiting for a girl to pay their bills, waiting for somebody who has a car or has a job or has some money and is just hanging there, is not doing nothing, can achieve nothing with his life. Run from such a man. That is signature for destruction. When you come across a man, number one, what is his vision? Number two, where is he going? Number three, what, where is he heading? Number four, what is he doing with his life? Number five, is, has he accepted responsibility? Any man who asks you for money is a no-go area. Whether he's asking you for money to borrow him money or asking you for money to assist him do anything, he's a no-go area. He is not a man. He is a woman. And if you marry such a person, you have married, you are a wife, but you have married a wife. I cannot stand lazy men. And God can't. God is a very, he's a hard worker, aggressive, vision-driven God. Can't stand men who don't have any sense of God's and responsibility and sense of direction. I can't imagine myself in my dream asking my wife, do you have something there for me, please? Oh, I heard you went, to, you went, you went somewhere to... to um, to minister, how much did they give you? Bring it. We have been married for 25 years. I have not asked her once. Before, after, how much did they give you? Where they invited you to speak? Or how much did this one? How much? Not once. Not one day. What is in that envelope somebody gave you? How much is inside? A Chris? Jesus. Insanity is worrying me. <laughs> no be mother upon me. How about, how about why? Vision. Solid vision. Solid vision. That is confirmable with solid motion. So first of all, you yourself need a vision. What does God want me to do with my life? That is you the man and also you the woman. What is God wanting me to do with my life? So when a man comes to you and he says, I am a politician, then you can tell yourself, God didn't tell me anything about politician. What God told me about his ministry, what God told me about is a business tycoon. He didn't mention politics at all. Oh, he came and said, I am a military man. He said, no, 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 that is not right. <laughs> there's, another mil there's another person for the military man. There's another person for the military man. <laughs> there's another person for the military man. <laughs> Or the man came and said, I'm a pastor. He said, not, not, not me, not me. God didn't tell me to marry pastor. If you marry me, I'll just spoil your ministry for you. <laughs> not that you are a bad person. Not that you are not a good girl. But God did not tell you that you are going to marry a pastor. So if a pastor comes your way, he went to the wrong person. And don't let anybody, anybody manipulate you into marrying anybody that is not God's will for your life. So first, you need to know where you are going. There are some people who, who oppress people into, say, I saw the vision clearly that you are the one for me. Tell them, I saw not the vision clearly that you are not the one. anybody intimidate you with what they saw eh? because you two have eyes to see if that scene is important God should show you take your seat did you hear something here tonight so you you must when I 
My wife's or, or mindset and passion and vision and focus is ministry. Even though she's, she was trained as a medical doctor and still a medical doctor. But when I came, she wasn't confused. She was the kind of person that was already planning on how to do missionary work. How to be in a village somewhere, obviously this or that. And then, and then be rugged and do rural evangelism and those kind of things. Uh, or, or just ministry. Already preaching inside buses, preaching in front of hostels, preaching on. So when somebody who is smoking fire arrived, <laughs> fire on the head, fire on the just fire in motion. Arrived, she was not intimidated. Said, this is the man. This can be the man. We are headed the same way. I think this passion is the same with that passion. And for 20 something years it is confirmed I am here to announce to somebody you shall not miss it that amen is too paralyzed shout a louder amen lift your hand say I shall not miss it I cannot miss it I will not miss it take your seat in the presence of the Lord is anybody getting anything tonight? I heard from R.W. Shambach that at times it takes angry preaching for some people to be delivered. He said to the captives, deliverance is preached. So when, when at times you see us roar, it is to impart sense. One man met me some time ago. He said, I'll tell you two stories. He said, I don't like ladies who are looking for who will take care of them. I said, so what kind of ladies are you looking for? He said, the one that will take care of me. <laughs> Look at you. You don't want to take care of her. She should take care of you. Unfortunately, that guy has major challenge of life, marriage, everything. Looking for who will take care of me. He said, I don't want any lady who all the time want me to be baby her. She's baby, baby, baby. I say, what, what about what do you want? Say the one who will baby me. The one who one another one. That one was a man cello. Almost 50. He hadn't married. You know, there's a difference between bachelor and manchelo. <laughs> matured, fully matured man. Whose children should be thinking of getting married that has not yet married. He said, I don't want struggling ladies. I said, who do you want to marry? He said, I want heavy class women, man. Already has car, has house. <laughs> I look at him, I say, look at you. You. God will deliver you from such people. Lift your right hand and say, Father, I cannot end with the wrong persons. In Jesus' name. Number six, are we number six? Lack of a clear vision. We have done that. Number six is past emotional baggages past emotional baggages can delay people from getting married Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 the Bible said brethren I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind I am reaching forth unto those things which are before. I am reaching forth to those things which are before. Are you ready for this? Until you forget the past, you cannot access the future. Forgetting the things that are behind. You can't. And reaching forward. There are people who want to reach forth to the future. 
without forgetting the past. Listening to this statement is very strong. To decide not to forget the past is to decide to forego the future. When you decide not to forget the past, you have decided to forego the future. And what am I talking about? Basically, two, two things. Relationships that didn't work. Emotional hurts. Past hurts, pains, bitterness, unforgiveness that has come from either betrayal, deception, or rejection. You see, somebody betrayed you, you trusted them, they betrayed you. Somebody deceived you. After you spent all your money, they married another person. Somebody rejected you. You love them, they, they, they hated you in, in exchange. You know, and, and there are people who can do very, very terrible things. I've seen people who married a friend of the person they wanted to marry. They said no to the girl and married the girl's friend. You know, some human beings can do even what animals will not do. There are people who behave as if it is not a human heart that is in their heart. I tell some men, you said you wanted to marry this girl. And you have gone very far. Suddenly you say you won't marry again. If I were you, I will hold on and pray for her to get married before you think of marrying. If you have a heart, pray for her and trust God for her to get married before you think of getting married. He just walked away and left her to, 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 to hang. Not to talk of now marrying the friend of the girl. If, they, if you are close to God, you hardly hurt a fly. There are people who do this. He jilted one girl, jilted the second girl, jilted the third, jilted the fourth, jilted the fifth. Only you? Are you a devil physical? Who comes to steal to steal people's joy? To kill to destroy? Take your seat. And then the the, the girl is hurting. And let me tell you, that kind of agenda of the devil came only to tie your life down. You are bitter. You are unforgiving. When you remember the man, you remember your friend that married him, or you remember everything, you, you got very bitter. That bitterness ties you down. I beg you, release it. God will help you to release it. For the sake of your future, the sake of your destiny, Paul the apostle said, I must forget the things that are behind if I must reach the things that are in front. Some people, it's not even the unforgiveness against, just unforgiveness against a man or a woman. And some people, it's, it's, it's the other way around. It is the man who has been jilted. I, I know of men that spent all their money. Men who sponsor some girls in school. Both their mother and themselves eating from the man. Then suddenly they come and say no. They saw a bigger fish. And then the man can be so bitter. Which girl can I trust? I've seen men like that. I've seen one. I've seen a couple of men like that. Say after I've spent everything on this girl. He just left me. And went for another person. And if you see such a girl. Who left another person is just finished milking and say you are the one you love now. Be on the run for your life. Be on the run for your life because you are the next target. You will find another person and abandon you. Those are not wifeable materials. Those are business women. Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> they're not interested in my it's their business women in your house they will still be doing business they will still be doing business in your house for bigger fishes am i communicating at all i want i'm going to pray for you tonight the forgiveness now beyond that forgiveness it's also the emotional hurt how many of you know that there is healing for emotion and that is what to pray for the second component of letting go the emotional baggage is the healing of your emotion the trauma the wound the injury the pain you felt how god should so heal you until when you hear the man's name or you hear the girl's name or you see their picture it doesn't do you anything anymore am i communicating because many of us say we are we are okay we are true but when you come across a man maybe you are in the supermarket you saw each other you turn your way your heart starts beating very fast oh lord just help me just just move here father kill him why is he alive still why is he still alive kill him You are normal, you are at peace until you saw the picture, until you heard the name. It means the healing it has not been completed. We need to come to that point where you see the, the person doesn't mean anything to you. It takes the power of God. Jesus Christ was a man of sorrow. The Bible said, put it on the screen. Isaiah chapter 53 from verse 3. Put it on the screen. He is despised, rejected, a man of men, a man of sorrows. He was acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteem him not. Surely he has borne our griefs. The thing that is grieving you, he carried it. The same way he carried your sickness, he has also carried our sorrows. So, the way we hand over our sickness and since we also said lord take this sorrow take this grief take this pain heal my mind it's healable it is healable is there anybody here who has not been wounded by people there's there is nobody here who has not been wounded by people including the speaker <laughs> One of our lecturers, he's talking, he's saying, including the speaker. That is including himself. <laughs> Until they called him speaker. The speaker. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you, you, you come to the point where you let go and then you are free. Now, this is the danger of no emotional healing. I'll finish in a moment. Mr. A hurt you. Mr. A rejected you, despised you, even lied against you. Married another person and continued to talk against you and about you. God helped you. You married Mr. B. See the challenge. You are having emotional baggage. That Mr. A laid on you by his action. You carried all of it into your relationship with Mr. B. You have some venom inside. Pent up anger. Unresolved hurt. After any slight thing, you explode. The explosion was to be against Mr. A. But he's not here now. So there is a transfer of aggression. You know the same way that women shout on their children when their husband is having challenge with them and they take it out on the children. Leave me alone! The man wounded her. The man injured her with his word. Children are feeling it. In the same manner, your relationship with Mr. A that didn't work is now destroying your relationship with Mr. B. Now see the worst thing. After a while, you begin to see Mr. B as if he was Mr. A. You begin to treat him with the same eyes. You can't take me for granted. You can't talk to me anyhow. I am not that cheap. 
He hasn't done anything to warrant such statement. But you are transferring it from here. So your relationship with Mr. A that did not work has also spoiled your relationship with Mr. B. Very, very dangerous. I know a man who divorced with his wife and remained single for life. You know why? I can never be able to live with another woman. I think they are all the same. When you begin to think, I think all men are the same or all women are the same. Then it's, there's something you are carrying. Am I communicating at all? Is there anybody understanding what I'm saying? I prophesy freedom tonight. Say that amen like a believer. Lift your hands. Say, Father, I release every hurt, every pain of my life. I release today in Jesus' name. Take your seat and I'll give you the final point. So, what causes delays? Ancestral causes and spells, character challenges, sinful action, lack of service, lack of a clear vision, past emotional baggages or baggage, and finally, hidden fears or covenants. Something hidden somewhere. Hidden fears, hidden covenants. Job said in Job chapter 3, verse 25, he said the things, for the thing which I greatly fear has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. You know, there are, there are many people who grew up with many fears. Grew up. Some people grew up with the fear of ending in a wrong relationship. Supposing I, I, I end in a wrong marriage. Just out of nowhere. There are those who grew up with the fear of ending in the same kind of marriage that their parents had or the kind of marriage that they saw their sister or their friends or their colleagues or their friend's sister. You know, we live in society where we hear stories. Uh, one young lady told me some time ago, he said, I'm wondering whether marriage can work because all the marriages I see that I know around it doesn't seem to work. Such fears inside. They, in fact, some have the fear of ending according to what some people said. Let's see how you will be married. Let's see how you get a good marriage. Let's see how you, you will succeed. And those kind of hidden fears people's predictions that entered your heart first john chapter 4 this should be verse 15 not verse 8 whosoever shall confess that jesus is the son of god god dwelleth in him and he in god please go on and we have known 18 herein is our law there is no fear in love but perfect love casteth out fear because fear has a torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. You cannot fear and love at the same time. And you know that marriage is based on love. So fears, fears. I didn't grow up in what you might call the best of marriage. No, not at all. But what that did to me was to vow that I will marry and I will marry well. I vow that what I saw as a child, my children will never see in the home. And what my mother saw, my wife can never see. I vowed, I vowed, I entered marriage like a fight with a determination that it will work. Some people, it is the opposite. You know, when things happen, people take opposite sides. There are some, the things that made them, they saw as growing up children, made them audacious. Some they just say, nothing can work. Hidden fears. Can I ask a question? Is there anybody who has a small fear about marriage that maybe you don't know how it will be, but as if don't be afraid. If, if there are people who lift up their hand it's because either they are 
I can tell you almost, yes, God bless, almost, almost, there will be nothing less than 80% of people here who have some slight fear. This thing called marriage, are you sure? Will the man love me? Will he continue to love me? Even if he starts by loving me, will he continue? Will he ever see somebody that will be better than me and change his mind? And vice versa. Such fears are there. But we use the scripture to kill the fear. The path of the just is a bright shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. On our wedding anniversary, I told my wife, we say happy wedding anniversary. This is 25 years. Oh, we're congratulating each other. Happy wedding anniversary. And I, I can't remember the first statement I said. I said, it's not that we are 25 years old, though. We have been 25 years married. And I said, and it is as sweet as it was the first day, the first day when we married. And she said, is it no sweeter? I said so before. She is the one who said, is it no better than the beginning? I said, that's right. It is better. We are not talking to people. We are talking to each other. It wasn't, made, it wasn't on broadcast. You see? Someone said to thy own self be true. How many of you know you can't lie to yourself in the bedroom? If that is true, the path of the just is a shining light. So we use scripture to nullify the fears. Hidden fears. Some is hidden covenant. There are people who do a lot of very, very stupid things. Pardon me the use of the word. Paul said, oh foolish Galatians. So there are times such words are permitted. See a man, say, me and you must marry. If not you, nobody. If not me, nobody. Agreed? Yes. There are even people who cut their hand and enter Yeshua's covenant. Put the blood in cup, blood in cup, it's water, drink. You marry me, I'll marry you. Even if there was no covenant, let us agree. Can you tell me that if not me, who marry another person? Very true. I can't marry nobody else. What of you? The same thing. You are talking to a mortal man that can change. Man that can lie. Man that can die. Does it mean if he dies, you are not going to marry? Or she dies. If not me, you won't marry. If not you. And words are spirits. And the Holy Ghost, I mean, the, the, the devils can take the word. The Holy Ghost can, can take the word whichever way it goes. And then people are stranded. A man looks at you, he likes you. But that utterance from the realm of the spirit is standing in the way. After he wants to make a move, something changes. There is another person for him. There are people that are single, physical, but they are engaged in the spirit. Either engaged to who they have not forgot, forgiven or engaged to who they have a covenant with even though the man has already married. Oh, tonight is freedom night. I was going to pray for us tonight. But I want you to take the whole day tomorrow. Reflect on the things you have heard and come with a heart of vengeance for the yoke to be broken. Stand up on your feet. Hold the hand of somebody near you. Say after me, say, what my parents suffered, I will never suffer. The kind of wrong marriage I see around me, I have seen around me, can never be my portion. What my parents suffered, I can never suffer. In the name of Jesus, every secret fear, every hidden fear, fighting my life, today is your end. Every secret fear, every hidden fear, every hidden covenant, fighting my destiny, today is your end. Every emotional baggage, emotional pain and hurt fighting me, today is your end. In the name of Jesus, I receive clear vision for the future. 
I reject visionlessness. I receive the grace to serve God. In the name of Jesus, every sinful action fighting my life and my destiny. Today, I ask for mercy. Every character challenge in my life, Lord, mercy. Help me, Lord. Every ancestral curse, anti-marital curse, fighting me. Today will be your end. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray.